<laughs> I get it. Well, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Shelby Saucier. I use they, them pronouns, and I uh, am a super nerd about resumes, cover letters, interviews, and career development. Um, so for those of you who I haven't met yet, hello. For those of you who I saw last month, good to see you again. Um, so today it's going to be um, very informal like our session last week was, but much more hands-on. So um, I guess there's a couple of options. So I see that there are some submissions in the drive for folks who submitted copies of their resume for review. So I think I'll give you all options. So let me explain um, how the workshop, how like I imagine the workshop going, and then I'll give some options for those of you who either haven't created or haven't submitted a resume yet to make sure that we all have something productive to do over the next hour. So we have the option to go into breakout rooms. So I imagined for those of you who have at least some draft of your resume, it doesn't have to be complete. Um, it could even just be the professional summary. It could even just be a format, whatever version of your resume you have. I'm imagining we can go into breakout rooms in pairs at first, and um, I'll be one of those pairs. So let's see, we have two, four, six, seven with two, two. So I guess in the chat, if you all could say um, yes, if you have a full resume that you're ready for review, like a full draft, if you could say somewhat or maybe for if you have part of a resume and then it just say no, if you don't have anything today at all and any of those options is fine. I just wanna get an idea of how we're going to be organizing the breakout rooms. So again, yes, if you have a full or mostly a full draft, maybe, or somewhat if you have something to share right now and then know if you don't have anything written down yet, which again is okay. Also, um, I'm gonna say Ellie is a site lead and is here mostly for support. And um, so just- okay, great. Good and Thank you. Um, Ellie, also, if you decide that you wanna participate with your resume too, like that's totally cool and Tutu as well. <laughs> All right, Nelson, cool. Um, yeah, I see, well, I see, um, I don't see your resume, but I think maybe it's just the way it was saved. Um, I'm not quite sure, but okay, good to know that you have one. Um, Giselle, yes, okay, great. And your resume doesn't need to look fancy yet. So do not worry at all. All right, so Oscar, where are you with your resume? Okay, my resume is done. That's okay. Um, Oscar, do you have any version of any part of your resume prepared? Uh, yeah. Cool. I think I submitted it, but yeah, I, think I just filled out the end. I just filled it out. So. Okay, great. No, that's great. Um, Tutu, I think, I don't know if it's my access to the drive, but um, I, can, I can't see Nelson or Oscar's resume for some reason. Oh, um, let me share. Wait, wait. Okay, that's okay for now while you're doing that. So um, either Ellie or Tutu, I don't know if both of you are hosts. So, oh, I am. Because everybody has at least some draft of a resume, why don't we go into groups of two? So let's get two different partners. So we'll do, um, let's do two different partners for 10 minutes each and we'll mm -hmm. alternate. So if Ellie, um, if you would be oh, either Ellie or Tutu, if you, either of you would be down to be one of the editors, mm -hmm. that would be really great. So why don't we do one? 10 minute session 
Okay. We break everyone out into pairs, including myself, into a pair. Okay. And then we'll come back into the main room and sort of like mix and match. Like we don't need to alternate um, immediately. And then I just want to be sure that um, if I don't get to your resume right now, then I will go and review it after and send you feedback. So don't worry. I will be looking at everyone's resume. So here's what I would like all of you to do. So first... I want you to give a couple different types of feedback. So the first type of feedback that I want you to give the person you're reviewing their resume is I want you to give them what you like about the resume. So I want you to point out specific lines that you feel are really strong, certain vocabulary that you feel are really strong. Um, do you like part of their format? Do you like this? Do you like that? Start with positive feedback before, because there's going to be constructive feedback for everyone's resume. There's even constructive feedback every time I look at my resume, right? Mm -hmm. So once you, once you are like, okay, great. I feel like I've pointed out all of the positive feedback, then move on to the constructive feedback. All right. So when we're giving constructive feedback, there's a few things to keep in mind. Um, point out how they could improve that section. So for example, if you're like really not vibing with the format and you're looking at it and you're like, oh my God, this is so bad. Don't say mm -hmm. that. Right? Say, hey, I'm feeling like if you formatted it in this way, it will be perceived more effectively or you'll be able to communicate your story more effectively, right? Put yourself in the person's shoes who you're giving feedback to. All right. Okay, I'm gonna pause there. What questions do people have about this? Um, I think it, what makes the most sense is for folks to have their resumes pulled up and to, sh to be able to, sh I think I'm gonna make sure everyone can share their screen, but in your breakout rooms, you can actually share your screen. Um, if for some reason you don't have access to that, you can send, I guess, email each other. Definitely. Yeah. And there's three breakout rooms uh, and one editor in each. Okay, great. So it's 517. So let's do, actually, let's stay in pairs. Now that I'm, I'm trying to think of how to make it really simple on Zoom as well. So let's stay in pairs. Um, whoever is receiving the feedback, if you could also be the timekeeper, Tutu will be able to message everyone too with a reminder of the time, but just be cognizant and aware of what time it is. So at 10 minutes or switch over sooner, if you're feeling like 10 minutes is way too long, you can switch partners sooner, but alternate. So for example, if Tutu and I are partnered together and my resume is being reviewed first, I'll pull it up on my computer and screen share with Tutu. So while Tutu is giving me the feedback, I can do live updates and edits on my resume, right? You could take notes, you can make the changes. I'll leave that up to you in your own work style, maybe like a combination of both. If it's about formatting, maybe just take some notes and say, okay, indent this, okay, do this, okay, change the font over here, and then you can go back later. But if it's like, okay, just change this word, or you need to move the sentence down to the bottom, then you can do that in real time. So let's spend 20 minutes doing that, 10 minutes for each. Um, I am going to be paired with someone. Uh, I don't know who, so we'll see. And then we'll come back together. And uh, I want us to do like a share out after that. So you don't have to share if you don't want to. So I want us to do a share out. Then we might do another round of that with another partner, which would be really nice. Then maybe another share out. And then at the end, I really would like to cover interviewing like a tiny bit, at least if we could even get like 10 or 15 minutes in. I think that would be really a really great next step for all of you to prepare for whatever uh, your immediate future holds for career development wise. And then again, I just want to repeat, if I don't get to your resume today, then either you or Tutu will email it to me and I can give you feedback right on the Google Doc. All right. Great. All right, I've opened all the rooms and you guys should have gotten a message to join.
All right. Thanks, Tutu. Great. All right. See you guys in 20 minutes, right? Yes. welcome welcome back everyone um shelby's gonna give it come back in a second but i think the next thing we're gonna do is just report back on what um what we learned or what we shared within each of our breakout rooms um Hi all. Still steamy in here, so I had to pull my hair up, but welcome back. I hope everybody had a great feedback session. Um, I would love, I am a huge fan of share outs. I think it just like builds community in a really special way. And please, no one feel pressure to share out if you're not feeling compelled. I would really appreciate hearing your feedback, um, not specifically about the resume, but just about your experience in the breakout room. So if anybody is feeling compelled, to share their experience. I will hand the mic over to you. I can start. Um, I shared my resume, which um, I got really great feedback from Giselle and Duneli. And it's, it's funny because the job I was applying for is like a leadership role. And so I wanted to put all of this information on my resume, but I what I didn't realize is that it's maybe overwhelming. Um, and so I think I'm going to maybe consider putting it on two pages or adding graphics or just seeing if I can uh, summarize what I what I'm trying to say with less words. So that's that's my homework, you know. And also I liked um I just thought the feedback was a balance of like positive and 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 not negative but critical feedback, which I think is really good. And I think it's really good to get to hear from other people what they think, even just in terms of getting a like uh like just what they feel the moment they see it. I, I forget what the word is for that. Just like a, a gut feeling of like, oh, what does this look like to you? Is this something that you'd be excited to read or not. So that was super helpful. Thanks, Shelby. Thanks, Tutu, that's great. And I've seen your resume too, and it is amazing. Is anybody else feeling compelled <laughs> or has any questions or feedback? Um. Well, during my session with Shelly, I learned new things, you know, about the resume. Like, for example, I think it was like what Tutu said about having like two different copies. Or like one would be like a master copy or the main resume. And whenever I would apply for a job, I would have a separate copy and just make slight modifications that would better like accommodate or suit the job that I'm applying for. So yeah. Cool. Awesome. That's great to review your resume. Anybody else feeling like sharing out? 
I usually wait about 10 seconds before I move on. So I will just wait. All right, 10 seconds have passed. So I, because we're such a small group today, I want to give a couple of options for where to go next. So I see doing another breakout room with reviews being very valuable to you all, if that's what you want to prioritize in this session. We have about, about 45 minutes left. We could do three things I'm imagining. One, we could do another 20 minute session where we review back and forth, which is great. And then we can use the remaining time for interviews. We can do another abbreviated session where we do um, five minutes each and just do like a speed round with each other of reviews and then use a longer period of time for the interviews. Or we could just skip resume reviews and we can go straight into an extended uh, interview um, overview. Um, so I guess the best way to do this would maybe just to be get your thoughts in the chat. And I really want to be sure that I hear from each one of you. Um, so if you could just put your preference in the chat. Um, so let's say option one is what we just did, 10 minute review, 10 minute review, abbreviated interview. Option two is five minute review, five minute review, longer interview. Option three is no more reviews and just interview. I have a question. Sure. So you said there's 45 minutes left? Yes. Um, the resume, sorry, Nelson, the resume, um, workshops are uh, one one and a half hours. I'm sorry, I forgot to add that to our calendar. They're one and a half hours just because there's a lot to cover. But we also understand if you have to leave at six, that's totally fine too. And if you do have to leave at six, would you prefer that we start the conversation about interviews? Do you have to leave at six, Nelson? I, I do, but you know, okay. I don't think it matters, but I think the show the people participating I don't know if they would like. But we can take that into consideration. And I would like to change my answer to option three then. <laughs> All right, I haven't gotten any more votes yet. Yeah, guys, can you let us know in the chat what you prefer? <laughs> All right, so we have two people who need to leave. So let's briefly talk about interviews. Yes. And then um, if we have time at the end, we'll do maybe a another five minute and five minute review. Um, and again, I will be looking at all of your resumes as well. Let me just pop my email into the chat again. So um, yeah, if, if for whatever reason, just like write this down and send me your resume and I will review it. Please send it to me in a Google Doc and give me editing permissions and I'll make my edits right on there. Um, Nelson, still feel free to send me your resume as well. Um, and I can look at your second version too. Okay, great. So uh, let's talk about interviews at least intensely for 10 minutes and then we'll sort of taper off into the reviews after. So there's a few things that I really want to highlight with interviews and the first thing is there's different types of interviews that I think most people, so cover letters. So we're not going to review cover letters today, but please send me your cover letter as well. That's a great question. Also, I'll just note that if you are prepping for an interview, feel free to send me information on the job or the school that you're applying to, and we can collaborate about how to answer some of the questions as well and be a little bit more specific. Yeah, so send me, even if you have a question, just like send me whatever for uh, at this email and we can work together to figure it out. So most folks, unless you're born into like the utmost privilege, um, which I 
was not, um, we'll have to do a wide variety of interviews. So some of the interviews that I've done um, have been wonderful and jobs that I actually wanted and I actually saw myself fitting into the org or the position and I could bring my authentic weird self to and those are really beautiful. And those aren't specifically what we're going to focus on today, although I do want to incorporate a lot of what you would bring to those interviews to the interviewing realm across the board, right? So a lot of us, especially when we're starting out as young professionals, are applying for jobs so we can stack our resume, so we can get specific skills that we want. And oftentimes we're applying to organizations that don't always align with our own core values or our own life mission, right? And I just want to remind you that that's okay. It's okay to make some sacrifices to get where we want to go. Life is a journey. Your career is a journey, right? And so I think that there's, my personal perspective is, I think there's a certain amount that is really okay to sacrifice and really okay to put something aside in order to reach your goal. But for myself, at least, that stops at a certain area, right? For example, I got this one job once that I was really excited about, and I thought it was going to be super cool, and it turns out that they were transphobic, right? And so once I found that out, that was something that I couldn't get past because I'm a non-binary trans person. Like, it just wasn't vibing with me. And so I made the decision for myself to start interviewing for other jobs. And once I learned that there was that sort of sentiment out there in the world that was so close to me, I made it a point to make sure that I wasn't applying for jobs that was going to put me in danger like that, right? So the first step is to research the organization that you're applying to and really imagine yourself working for this organization, you can go online. Most organizations have websites, they have YouTube channels, they've got Glassdoor, which I will put in the chat. I'm sorry, I spelled that wrong. <laughs> it's Glassdoor. Oh my gosh, it happened again. Okay, sorry. I have a friend whose last name is Door and it's spelled with two R's. So, okay, Glassdoor, like an actual door.com. <laughs> Go and do research about this organization. If you're a queer person, if you're a Black person, if you're an Indigenous person, go on these websites and see how they're treating folks who share identities with you, right? I don't want to work for transphobic people. I don't want to work for homophobic people. It's just not going to work for me. It puts me in direct danger. So that's the first step is like really figure out who you're going to be speaking with. Once you figure that out, once you're like, okay, maybe it's not the most ideal job, right? Maybe I'm going to be the only queer person or the only person of color in this role, but it really seems like they're trying or they're working towards these specific initiatives or whatever the reason is, you decide to apply. So once you decide to apply, find out who you'll be interviewing with, right? Are you going to be interviewing with the hiring manager? Are you going to be interviewing with HR? What is their interview process even like? Now, usually when you apply and you get an email back from them, they'll tell you specifically, okay, the first step is a phone screen with someone from HR, for example. That could be me. I do phone screens at my org. I did all the phone screens at Grow NYC, right? So you could be getting someone who is uh, has knowledge about the whole org, but not necessarily about the specific position that you're applying for. And this is a really unique opportunity because this person is basically just seeing if you're going to fit into the organization, right? And this is really common in nonprofits. It's really common in spaces where hard skills like uh, computer programming, tech IT, where it's not a job like that, right? more hard skills, tech, IT, computer programming, manual labor, anything that requires you to be like touching things or like making products is usually more focused on the actual hard skills that you have, right? So the first step is really just communicating who you are to these people, why you're interested in the organization, and what value you bring to the org, right? And so these are all things for you to decide. There's no standard questions that people ask. I think that the more traditional 
um, under the umbrella of capitalism. The more traditional the organization is that you're applying to, I think the better you can predict what types of questions you're going to be asked. For example, why do you want this position? Why are you the best fit for this role? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? You know, things that you Google and it's like the 10 interview questions that you come up with. And certainly take time to Google those lists and write out your responses and really practice them with people that you know. Practice your responses out loud. You don't want to be reading. I've interviewed so many people who read their responses and it's like, I don't, did you write those? Do you mean those? I really don't know. I don't even know who you are. You sound like a robot, right? So don't read your responses. Definitely practice them. Once you are in the interview, when you first get there, it's the interviewer's job to make you feel comfortable, right? I think, I mean, I've done hundreds of, myself looking for a job, have done hundreds of interviews before. And I've been an interviewer on thousands of interviews easily. And most everyone is really nervous, especially if you want the job. And so I think, something really important to remember is when you go into an interview to just like chill out for a second. And when someone asks you a question, just actually think about it. Don't just start spitting out words because you feel nervous and you wanna fill the silence. Have a pen and a piece of paper next to you. And in the very beginning of your interview say, hey, I'm kind of nervous. And if I pause for a minute, it's because I'm writing down the question and I usually show them my notepad. I'm like, I'm writing down the question to make sure that I can fully answer all of your questions. I want to make sure that being nervous, I don't miss anything. And that shows them things like you're detail oriented, you're an active listener, you really care about the interview, right? There's so many things and under, again, this umbrella of capitalism that tells us that like speed and efficiency are the most important things. And that is super not true. Not all orgs buy into that, right? You apply to somewhere on Wall Street, for example, maybe they do want you to be snappy like that because they live in that type of world. And that's a very specific type of interview to prep for, right? But generally, whether you're in tech, whether you're in nonprofit, whether you're here or there, people really appreciate taking a minute to just breathe think about the question, really think about an answer. And if you can't think of an answer, make it up, seriously. Just be like, okay, listen, I can't think. So I've had quite a few uh, very interesting interactions where I asked someone, um, one of my favorite questions is asking about conflict and how people resolve conflict, right? Because it can be very uncomfortable for people, but it's a natural part of being a human. And people have a hard time and or don't want to share their experiences. So they say something like, oh, you know, I can't think of anything. And I'm like, okay, well, let me give you an example of conflict. And you can tell me how you would resolve that, right? So if you can't think of anything, reframe the question like that in your head. Say, okay, if I was this person and I asked this question, what, what would I give them as an example? Think of something, talk about your auntie, talk about your cousin, like talk about conflict outside of work. It's totally fine if you actually don't have conflict at work or you actually can't think of any weaknesses, for example, um, to just switch the question around in your head and be like, okay, let me think about this from a different perspective. Okay, cool, what are my strengths? All right, my strengths are communication, uh, my strengths are detail, I'm detail oriented. Okay, so my weaknesses must be, maybe I have a hard time saying no. Like maybe I just take on too much. If I'm so detail oriented, I just say yes to everything and give that as an example. Um, feel free, especially when you're young yeah. and entering the field. Um, oh, I, I also, uh, <laughs> I just got asked a question too in an interview and I uh, didn't have an answer. And I think the question was, um, what, how did you deal with a situation in which you made a decision that was unpopular? And I couldn't think of any decision that I'd made that was so unpopular that it got so much. And I did, I began to answer it, 
but I didn't feel like I began to give a situation that was like mildly unpopular <laughs> but then I stopped and I said you know I think if I'm thinking about my leadership um, trait and skills I often like to communicate to people a lot about what we're doing. I want them to understand what the mission is. I want them to understand before we do anything that this is why we're doing this, this is where we're going. And I often feel like when you do that, by the time you get to the other end, people understand what's going on. They might not always agree, but they understand because you've been transparent. And so I essentially flipped the question to say, I don't have a lot of experience with unpopular uh, decisions because I am hopefully walking people through this so that they're understanding why we're making this decision even if it's hard and challenging so that was and that was because Shelby coached me through my intern in, interview prep so thank you Shelby you're so welcome Tisha I'm so happy to hear that yeah people in interviews just really want to see how you work and how you think and understand your processes and if you fit at the org um, I also want to acknowledge that it's 6.01, and so if you have to hop off, please do remember to send me your resumes and cover letters if you want, um, and if you have an interview coming up, feel free to send me an email if you're feeling some type of way about it, and we can do a little, like, impromptu coaching, um, or stay on as long as you want. I'll just keep, I'll just stay on until 6.32. We'll continue moving through some interview 101. And then whoever's interested, we can still do some resume reviews at the end. Also. And this is going to be recorded. So if you miss out on anything, you can just catch it in the recording. Awesome. All right. Bye, Tiffany. All right. So communicating our story is my next tip, right? So people can learn skills. People can learn Almost any skill we set our mind to, there's, of course, some limitations based on ability, based on um, interest. So when we're communicating our story to someone, we want to listen to the questions that are being asked and then translate it into life experiences. So yeah, something that Tutu's story really resonates in that way, right? So there's this model and it's called the, is it star tutu? Okay, it's called the star. Yes, yes situation, <laughs> task, mm -hmm. uh, action, yep, response, or results. Results, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so when you're replying to questions in an interview, you have a specific amount of time, right? If you're lucky, um, they'll tell you right up front how many questions that you'll be asked. Feel free to ask how many questions there are so you can get an idea of how much time to spend on each question. If it's a good interviewer, they won't ask you more than eight. That's like the high limit and you spend less than five minutes on each question. If it's a really good interviewer, they'll ask you five and you can spend a little bit more. If it's a great interview, they'll ask you four and you can spend even a little bit more because the fewer questions they ask, the more autonomy they give you to tell your own story and to fill in exactly how you will be the best fit for this role. So when someone asks you a question, you think in the context of, okay, here's the question that they asked. Think about the role itself, right? So you think about the roles and responsibilities. You think about the critical skills that they're looking for. You think about the must-haves. You think about the would like to haves, which usually includes like language proficiency or previous experience and stuff like that. And you mold them all together to tell your own story, right? So for example, if you're applying to a role and um, the emphasis is customer relations, being fluent in another language is really important. And then maybe you also have to interact with kids. Like if those are the three things that they're looking for, then you mold each of your responses to hit each of those three points. You say, okay, great. Here is um, one of my experiences. I did, I was working for X, Y, and Z. Um, this is what I was assigned to do. These were my goals. Um, this is how I achieved those goals, and this was the result, right? So you can flow through this one format of STAR. So situation, task, 
action results. And you can copy and paste that format for every single question, usually. And this is keeping in mind that the interviewer actually writes great questions, which I think is like kind of rare, but it's improving a lot. So especially if you get an interviewer that doesn't have really strong questions, they have those like basic Google 10 questions. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? If you can bring that creativity and you can bring that self-expression to this interview, I mean, it shows initiative, it shows drive, it shows creative thinking, it shows that you're detail oriented, you came prepared, like there's so many things outside of just your words that you're communicating during an interview. Uh, which brings me to my next point is a lot of interviews are in person and a lot of interviews are on video. And so etiquette is something to keep in mind. And I just want to be really um, upfront about professionalism and what professionalism actually is. And it's a symptom of white supremacy. And so we really have to keep this in mind when we're interviewing, especially with organizations that don't understand their own white supremacy tendencies, where, for example, they expect you to wear a suit or they expect you to wear a certain type of clothing, which is just like obscene to me, but a lot of organizations still do this. And so this is a choice that we make when we apply for these specific types of organizations. And so keep in mind that specific types of orgs will expect people to behave in a specific way. And this is included in interviews and it's up to you to make the choice if you wanna to conform to that or not, right? And so if you decide to conform to something that doesn't feel really authentic to you, but you're gonna go through it anyways because the pay is great or it's in a good location or they have great benefits, and these are the ways that you're going to move forward in society and benefit your own life. I just really want you to be reflecting on this before you go in, because in situations like that, for example, are really triggering to me because I hate capitalism and I think it's the devil and just like really bad for the world. Um, but lots of people are in it because it's survival, right? And that's the structure we live under. And so just be sure that before you go into these interviews, you understand the mindset of the organization. If it's a corporate entity that's really into business formal or business casual, they're going to expect you to interact in a specific way, much different if you go into a social justice nonprofit org, right? So social justice nonprofit org, I might wear something like this that shows my shoulders. I've got my undercut all out. I've got my hair up, whatever. I can speak more freely. I can share what I actually think and what I actually want to do in the organization to make real change versus in an interview with a corporate entity, you might be going in and you might look at their strategic plan, for example, and say, okay, this position has a very clear set of guidelines and expectations, and they don't really care who I am. And so I need to change my mindset to think in that way, to really focus on the job itself, what's written on the paper, and how I can deliver these results, right? And so this is a personal choice that you have to make, but you really need to understand who you're applying to and how that organization works and what People say it's like a culture, which I think is like a fraught term um, and co-opted, but maybe that's a helpful um, synonym for you to, to understand just like you're applying to people, but you're also applying to a machine. Like careers are really complicated to navigate because they live under this corporate umbrella. Okay, I digress with the anarchy real quick. <laughs> um, Shelby, I have something to add to what you were saying before about um, if someone's asking you pretty bland questions um, and you want to be able to like, um, you want to be able to elaborate what you are doing and, and like who you are and using the star, you know, a star like uh, method. So something that I thought was really helpful that you told me to do was to look at the job description 
and to see what not one focus in the core, like what are they really looking for and finding like what experience do I have that matches to these specific um, traits or, you know, skills that they're looking for. And so part of my interview prep was like I got the main titles for they were looking for like program management, um, part like, you know, building partnerships. And under those titles, I I listed um, not not a lot. I just listed like bullet points about like I worked at this organization and I did this. This was my experience of that. And so that was very helpful because when I was asked a question that wasn't, it, I didn't have questions in mind when I was preparing, but then when they asked me, can you give us an example of like uh, uh, a relationship that you worked on that that um, helped you build out a program or something like that. I already had it like under, oh, wait, this is program management. I have an example for that. And so that was really helpful. It helped me not to feel flustered. It helped me not to to also remember that because there were so many things that I realized that um, in my first interview, there were so many things I left out. Uh, and so like in the second round, it was really helpful to have like, okay, all of these things listed out so that when they're asking me, even at one point, I said, oh, I feel uh, there are a couple of things I want to bring up that you didn't ask me. Is it okay if I include them right now? So I think uh, sometimes we take for granted interview prep. We think it's just, oh, they're going to ask me questions and I'll answer them. And, you know, um, but I actually think being able to, to articulate your experience in a way that matches the role that you're looking for actually is a much better setup than just crossing your fingers and hoping you answer well. Um, it just, it just, I think it just communicates a more a calmness and, and at least I think for me, I think it communicates just um, a, a pre-thought, like, like, like she'll be saying, an attention to detail that a lot of people are looking for, regardless of what level um, you're applying for. Definitely, yes. Prep, Tuto, you're so right. Prep is everything. Um, something that I do, well, I do two different things that I shared with Tutu also. One is I take my resume and I break it into the categories that are on the job post. And the other is sort of vice versa is I take the job post and I break it down and list out my experiences based on literally each single line or each new topic. I put an experience on there and I take notes and then I have it either next to me on the computer screen. I do like a split screen so I can just like reference it, but more than more often than not, I have it printed out on my desk. And that's also where I'm taking the notes about um, when they ask me questions, I'll write down the question on there. And then um, I also always make sure to have a minimum of five interview questions prepped for them. And so I have all of that written out onto the document as well. So I have a quick reference because I, when I'm nervous, I a start just like blabbing and blithering on about something totally unrelated. Um, and in my past, like kind of inappropriate at times when I was learning like what to talk about at work and what not to talk about, like no one wants to hear about your deep personal life in a first interview, you know? Um, and then B, just to stay organized, right? So I go on a lot of tangents and it's nice to just be like, okay, wait, this is what we're actually talking about. Let's bring it back. So yes, being prepared is great. So it's that research, it's printing things out and writing on them, whether it's your resume and you write down each specific part of the job post or it's the job post and you write down each specific part of your resume just to stay organized. Um, I guess let's talk about a little bit uh, the questions that you should be preparing for the interviewers because there's sort of like three different parts to interviewing. One is the prep and the intro. So almost always the first question is tell me a little bit about yourself and why you want this position, right? Almost always. Um, no matter what round of interview you're in. Then there's like the body of it. There's like that middle part where they're asking you questions and you just reply. Um, it's okay to ask a couple of follow-up questions that are related to the question they ask, but try to save your questions for the end. And then the third part is the questions that you bring to the interviewer. And this showcases a lot about your prep, right? So it showcases what you know about the org. It showcases the opportunities that you see for yourself and the organization. And it showcases your critical thinking uh, and that you came prepared, right? 
So there are a lot of baseline questions that you can go online and look at to get an idea of where to start, but generally steer clear of anything really generic that you find on Google. For example, tell me what a day in the life is like at this job is like my least favorite question. Like, just don't ever ask that. It's just boring and no one has an answer for it. Like every single day, unless you're even accountants have different days. Like there is no one day at work. I guess very rarely there is like the same. If you have like a really monotonous job, um, there is. But in general, people are going to be like, well, it varies from day to day. And like, that's their response. So a couple of my favorite questions are things like, what have you determined to be success markers for this role? Do you have success metrics for this role? What does success look like for this position? Because that tells them that you're already thinking about what we have to do, what I have to do as the applicant in order to be successful in this role. It's already putting me in that position in my mind and in their mind. I already work there and I'm already thinking about how to be successful in very specific ways, right? Um, uh, another one is uh, if you're speaking with your manager, um, ask what their management style is like. How do they like to communicate? Do they like to communicate directly in person, on the phone, via email, via Slack, via text? What are they like to work with? Are they an introvert? Are they an extrovert? Um, Definitely don't ask what their sign is, but I mean, it's like a burning question for me every single time, but you'll find out later, like it's okay. <laughs> so my point is just be creative. Like again, the like everything in this short, short lesson is to just sit down and really think about the role, think about the org and think about you going into it. What are you feeling nervous about? Maybe you should make that a question. Are you nervous about commuting so far? Maybe ask what uh, if you're feeling nervous about something specific. So say, for example, you've only worked on a really small team and this team is really big, right? And you're feeling like maybe you're going to be lost in the sauce. Say, hey, as you see from my resume, I've only been a, a part of small teams before and I'm feeling really excited to come into a large team. What are some of the techniques that you use to facilitate healthy team dynamics and communication, right? So you're communicating to them that this is an area that maybe you're not personally familiar with, but you're excited to learn more about it and you want to know what the structure is without saying, eh, I'm really nervous about being on a big team and I don't really know what to do, you know? So just be really creative about your questions. Identify where your own insecurities are and spin it into a really creative question. I highly recommend emailing, texting, messaging, sharing your questions with other people. Show them your, uh, show them the job post, show them your resume and show them your questions and get feedback. Feedback is everything. Feedback is how we get farther. It's how we build community. It's how we build trust. It's how we solve conflicts, right? So just like really get into the feedback. It's, it's really important. And then, oh, I have a question, Shelby. Sure. Can you ask, I, it feels a little tricky to ask this, but can you ask what traits they're looking for in the person who could fill this role? Like, just, and I don't know if people have an answer for that because they could be like, oh, look, we like fill this out in the job description. But I think I wanna know that like what, if, if they're thinking, of a person who would be best for this role, what, what I guess personal traits would they have? And I don't know if that's something that, that would be a bias. I don't know. I, I'm just curious if that's something that is okay to ask or if that's something that would put them in a, in a situation where they might look like they're biased. But it also could be an opportunity for them to communicate culture. Definitely. So I think it's a perfectly appropriate question to ask. First of all, I think there's uh, there's specific ways that make it an effective question. And there's ways that um, could be more ineffective or vague, right? So 
Um, I actually asked this question to in the interview for the job that I currently have. And the way I framed it was I said, I knew a little bit about the team members already because I had done research, I had seen their work, it's been published, whatever. And so I said, listen, I see you're a team of two, you're trying to become a team of three. I know even after speaking with you a couple of times, you're both like really driven, motivated, detail-oriented. I listed out a couple of their obvious strengths. And I said, I, and then I think I listed out maybe two or three of my own strengths that I'm like really looking to bring to a team. I said, listen, I am like not playing with these org values. Like I believe in the org values and I will go to the end of the earth to make sure that we're abiding by them and fulfilling them. And this is where I want to go. Like, is this, is my personality, is this the type of person that you're trying to look for? Do you think I'd be a good fit on the team based on the conversations that we've had so far? So it was less, this is also my, like, I'm a very bold person. And so this is a very bold approach that not everyone will feel comfortable with. Um, so that's one approach is to just be like, this is who I am. Do you think that I will be a good fit on the team? Um, which is also a very strong way to end the interview as well. Uh, just say, hey, I'm really into this. Um, don't say I'm really into this. Say, hey, <laughs> I'm really passionate about this. This is like the only job that I'm applying to. Do you think that I'm a strong candidate? That's a great way to end an interview if you're feeling uh, like saying that. But yes, say, um, I see that you have X, Y, and Z skills on your team already. What specific skills are you looking to round out your team with, right? So ask if they want hard skills. Do they want soft skills like personality type, communication style? Yeah, I think that's a really great question because not only do they see that you're invested in learning more about this and that you've done research about the existing team, but more importantly, I think it tells you if you're going to be a good fit, right? Because I think interviews so often are perceived in a one-way direction. The employer is interviewing the candidate but really it's 50-50, the candidate where this interview, uh, this uh, question section comes in, the candidate is interviewing the employer and the organization, right? It's mutual. The employer gives an offer to the candidate and the candidate must accept if they want it, right? And so there is a power dynamic. The employer has power over the candidate. They have the power of the, the first offer, the first decision but it really is a two-way street, right? So be creative with your questions, uh, be authentic with your questions, find out where your insecurities are and focus your questions around that because this is the moment where you decide if you're going to be moving forward. If this person offers me a next interview, will I be taking it? Do I think I'm going to fit in this organization? Is it gonna be sustainable? I mean, depending on the interview, you might even just want the job for a couple of months, right? You could be going through the interview and thinking, no way do I want this to be my career. No way do I think I'm going to vibe with these people, but do I need a job? Do I need an income? Will I find a different opportunity? Maybe the answer is yes, right? So again, these are like the self-reflection questions that one should be asking uh, oneself, preferably after the interview, like make it just through the interview, um, if you're feeling like if someone is super misogynistic in the in the middle or beginning of the interview, you can straight up just be like, hey, I'm realizing this really isn't a good fit. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to go. Um, good luck with the process. Bye. Like, just don't even waste your time on these people. Seriously. Like, if you're not going to, if you're not into it, just leave. Like, time is so precious and so short. You don't need to do that. Um, but yes, be authentic bring your questions. It's a two-way street. Um, do your research. Really think about what it's going to be like in this position. And again, even if you know you're not going to like it, even if you know this isn't a permanent uh, role, think about what that means for you, for your life, and how you want to proceed with the interview. And I think, I mean, we have five minutes left. I think that's really all I have. I know this has been like super informal. I hope it's been helpful. 
Um, I try to deviate from like the really boring resume workshops that I've been a part of and just try to put it into real life. Um, and I hope, I hope it's been helpful. I'm happy to uh, guide you, uh, help you, assist you through this very sometimes confusing and muddy process, especially applying to roles that you're like, well, like maybe I want this. I don't know. Um, my personal opinion is take every interview that comes to you. You can always cancel them. You can always decline the offer. The more practice you can get with jobs that you don't even want, the better and stronger your interview skills are going to be down the road, right? So just take the interview, just make it work. Even if you know you're not gonna take the job, take the interview, try it out. I promise you'll learn something in every single interview. And at least the first few or many are gonna be really weird, like really weird. And that's okay, life is weird. Just embrace it, keep moving on there's always going to be another job or another opportunity. Like we all have valuable skills to offer. If you're feeling down on yourself, uh, get together with your friends, email me or Tutu. We can give you a pep talk. Um, everyone has something to offer in the entire world. There is a place for everybody here. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. I like, um, I, I don't know if you were here like in the beginning when we were talking. Oh yeah, when we were talking about the unexpected like feel good moment, I ran into the career education department like at a table because there was there was a career fair today, but I didn't go. Um, and I'm trying to get an on campus job, and I hadn't given in a cover letter, and which was apparently needed for the job were like needed to like and I had given in that application like two weeks ago so I was like oh well there's no <laughs> there's no going back now um but yeah I I don't know I like I wanted to stay here and like keep listening to you because I felt like it would be really good advice for when I get to that point it's just yeah I on campus jobs are so hard to get and so yeah, competitive they are coveted jobs um, I was on a campus for six years and had a campus job for the whole time um, for undergrad and grad school. And it's quite a competitive process. So I really, I resonate. I feel, I feel for you on that one. Um, but keep at it. Like it can be really discouraging, but definitely keep at it. And I don't know, like sometimes campus jobs offer specific perks. And I mean, one of the perks is that it's so close, right? Um, but sometimes like when I was in grad school, I got a graduate assistantship and they helped pay for my tuition, for example. And so there's like sometimes trade-offs like that, which make it better, something to look into. Um, but definitely like open yourself up to other positions as well. And yeah. even, like other roles close to campus, remote jobs, if you've got like specific techie skills uh, or something like that. So keep at it. I'm hoping it yeah, I'm hoping that when I take um, when I take my comp sci classes, hopefully next semester and the follow my sophomore year, that I can get some like tech skills to like help me do like UX design um, or something related to that. Um, maybe like a in, in, mini internship or something that'd be pretty helpful. Um, That's awesome. I yeah. also want to say that I don't know if it's too late. To send your cover letter honestly I would be I would email them and say hey, I yeah it. no I was literally I was about Do to it. send it to them I literally have it typed up I'm literally so serious look it's yeah. right there ready to send <laughs> before I like yeah yeah no, my cover letter I just started it though so it's like okay. I have nothing I mean no, just send a couple oh paragraphs it yeah. doesn't have to be a formal cover letter just say hey I I need a template need a that's the thing you're a busy student uh, I've been, I think, right? Yeah. Okay, I can oh, yeah. like, if you send, if you send the template, I'll have it here, but I'm going to send you the document that will have the cover letter so that you can, yeah. Nice. Yeah, Definitely. yeah and I'll email you also, um, because I have your email here, like, yeah. um, that I completed it or anything. Yeah. Okay, I'll send you the cover, the cover letter template. Yeah, please send it Actually, to me. Wait, let me send it right now it's in or, uh, the... also I don't know if you have like any like meetings that I could like schedule with you potentially 
to like help look over my cover letter for sure just email me we can schedule something okay yeah thank you so much definitely okay. <laughs> for sure and i'm janady by the way Janady, yeah shelby know, just... i think you were on our last session too right i remember yeah, remember you, yeah. for um for campus jobs too, talk to your professors like they always know uh, um jobs that are coming up and also uh even if you're not like a hard science major labs are also often hiring even like maintenance which is very cool in labs um yeah. you could be like like lab setups like, too yeah like you could set up you could break down you can clean but also sometimes people need research assistance and there sometimes aren't enough people in the class i mean there's all different there's all different types of options and you could even take like if there's a rec center if there's a library like apply for jobs that you don't even really want just to like have one and then you can keep applying for more jobs after that there's like lots of different techniques that you can use to scorn an on-campus or close to campus job but yeah your professors are a great resource for finding employment because they've got i mean they're professionals in new york city right so they've got tons of connections and at the very least, you can show them initiative and be like, hey, I'm out here trying to get a job. And like the market is so hard for everyone. And they understand. Or hopefully they understand. Yeah, it's like there's um, there's this place we call the Ville, which is the town right next to our college, because like this is like Massachusetts, like suburbs. like Yeah, so <laughs> I'm, it's like 